hey guys welcome back to my channel it's nello here and today's video is going to be a chit chat get ready with me i absolutely love doing videos like this because it has three things that i love which is filming myself doing makeup and talking i absolutely love talking i love all these things so these are kind of like my favorite kind of videos and i'm glad you guys enjoy it as well if you're not subscribed please subscribe this is 2019 let's start it right okay subscribe and also click the bell button next to the subscribe button so you get notified anytime i have a new video you. And that being said, let's get on with the video. So guys, again, if you're hearing a noise in the background, is the fan. I cannot come and be sweating. I, I have to use the fan, so I apologize for that. I am just in such a mood right now because I just finished watching the R. Kelly documentary. The surviving R. Kelly, if you've been on social media these past few days, you know what's going on, you know, the whole scandal with R. Kelly and like underage girls and everything. I'm just jumping straight into it because I literally just finished watching the documentaries. I had, um, I was supposed to film another video today, but I just wanted to have a little chat about this whole thing going on. Anyways, I just finished watching the documentary and I really don't know how I feel about that. It just, a whole lot of feelings is going on in my head. I don't even know where to begin, sincerely speaking. If you've not watched the documentary, you definitely, definitely need to watch that. It's just going to open your eyes to see a lot of things going on that we choose not to see, things we choose not to accept and admit. Because I feel like that's what this whole thing is really all about. Because whatever everybody's talking about now that R. Kelly did, he didn't do it in 2019. He didn't start it more like in 2019. 19. These are things he has been doing for years. A lot of people supporting him, covering him. People just choosing to ignore the fact that this guy is literally devil on earth. R. Kelly is like the devil on earth, in my opinion. On a normal day, this is the kind of thing that people can just get away with, you know, with the evidence that they had, with the stories, with the number of girls that have come out to tell their stories, with the sex tape that leaked with him urinating on a 14 year old jesus it's just you know i can't even begin to think about like picturing this happening to someone i know like one of my younger cousins or my sister's kids or like anybody this this happens to people every day and then the fact that he has gotten away with this for over 20 freaking years is mind-blowing you know there is a particular part in the video where um, you know, the case about Sparkle's niece, the 14 year old girl that, you know, they released a sex tape about like the sex tape. She was in the sex tape with, I think, another girl. Long story short, they went to court for that and then he was found not guilty. Not guilty. Okay, to me personally, the worst part about that case wasn't even the fact that R. Kelly was found not guilty for everything he has done. It was the mere fact that the girl's parents denied everything. They denied it was their daughter in the video because I felt like they were more concerned about the shame it would bring to their daughter than what their daughter was actually going through. And apparently the relationship continued. And the girl's father was apparently like his, um, is he guitarist or something? Or sure, he was part of his team and he still worked for R. Kelly for years to come. The most shocking thing was the fact that the girl's parents denied it wasn't their daughter. Everyone knew it was their daughter. The school teacher knew it was their daughter. The auntie, the friends, everyone freaking knew it was your daughter. But instead of just standing up for your daughter, defending your daughter, and just trying to, um, to bring justice to whoever did that to your daughter, you were more concerned about the fact that it would bring shame to her. I don't even think, thinking about it now, that they were concerned about the shame I've applied this foundation for 20 minutes. Hold on, let me get my concealer then we'll continue. The coverage on this foundation, this is the Colourpop foundation. Obviously, I still mixed it because even though I got a new shade, uh, I got the one seventy instead, it was still a little bit too red and too light, so I still mixed it, but it's amazing. I absolutely love how my face looks right now. The coverage is just out of this world, these two things. I think it's the Colourpop and uh, Maybelline Fit Me. Moving on. I felt like the parents were more concerned about what they were getting from R. Kelly 
because obviously the dad um, worked for R. Kelly and um, just what they stood to gain from R. Kelly that caring about their daughter and what their daughter was going through, which is so wrong. And I feel like that was what happened with most of the girls. You know, they just were thinking about what they stood to gain. I mean, R. Kelly is a big star and was a big star. So everybody was just thinking about what they had to gain. And that just made them feel like, okay, this is a small price to pay if I get this in return. And obviously, at the end of the day, he ended up not helping any single one of them. They gained nothing apart from just damaged childhood, damaged their teenage years, and just nothing. They, they basically gained nothing from him. This whole thing is just a lot to take in for me. It's just a whole lot. And the fact that this guy has gotten away with this for such a long time, the fact that nobody did anything about this, and the fact that even as this thing got released, these videos, he was cited in a club, is it two days ago or a day ago, even singing and clubbing in the midst of all this. Because that guy knows that he has gotten away with this for 20 years. It's still going to be very easy for him to get away with it. If we didn't do anything about this 20 years ago when it was happening, you know, when these girls were 14 and 15 and 16, now they are in their 30s and 40s probably. And it's just more um, difficult because now people are going to look at them like adults and question why they never, you know, um, brought it up in the past, why this never happened, forgetting the fact that they were children then, they are going to be judged now like adults, which is what's annoying me about this whole thing, because when everything, when all this thing happened, he got away with it then, and for 20 years he has been getting away with it. So there is really no guarantee that he's not going to get away with it this time, and it's just, I can't, it's just, I mean, it's amazing that he was even hinting about everything that was going on in his music, you know. And still, no one, like, I don't, I feel like people knew, people got it, because if you watch the documentary, you will know that they knew he was hinting about everything in his music. They knew that all his music were literally what happened or what has been happening in his life. Like, most of his songs were about different girls, different underage girls that, you know, he had something with. And I just feel like in his head when he sang that I believe I can fly, he literally believed he could do anything and get away with it. Okay, there's a comment that I wanted to, that I saw under one of the um, documentary that I wanted to read out for you guys. Hold on one second. Because that person just, in my opinion, just said it all. You know, with all these, um, especially like Africans or Black Americans or whatever, all these uncle this uncle that you know your uncle or your elder can do no wrong and when an elder person or an, just an older person generally does something wrong to you you're made to believe that you were wrong you're the one that's supposed to apologize because they're older than you so automatically they know better than you and an older person is never wrong i know that is how things kind of were when i was when i was growing up so i remember being wronged in so many ways by so many people close to me, but at the end of the day, you're younger, you have to apologize, your feelings don't matter, people don't even believe you when you're trying to say the truth. So I just feel like, yeah, that was what was going on at that time with most of the victims. And um, they were scared that no one was going to believe them, you know. R. Kelly was seen as, you know, such an angel, literally in the eyes of people. He was a pop star, he is a pop star, and, you know, he could do no wrong in the eyes of people. So as a child, you kind of believe that when you bring up the fact that, you know, he's doing this to you, no one is going to believe you, which for the most part is actually true. Let's not even try to deny that. It's true. It happens everywhere. It happens here in Nigeria, in America, whichever country you live in, it probably happens there where they tend to disregard the feelings of the child or just believe that an adult knows better or an adult cannot lie, which in most cases 
in most cases it's usually the other way around but people just keep an keep a blind eye to things like this when it's happening because most people from R. Kelly's crew obviously knew what he was doing they were helping him because like his wife said there was no way he was able to do all those things on his own he was a busy man for god's sake so he had a lot of help a lot of people consciously helping him knowing that what they were doing was exactly wrong unbelievable i might not look very angry but i'm just extremely pissed off right now and i don't even want to dwell on this um topic too much i have a lot of things going on in my life right now a lot of stress i'm under it's nothing related to this it's just preparing for birthday parties and all that but still i just this was just too annoying that I just could not not talk about it. It was just too unbelievable. Let me read a comment I wanted to read. I even forgot about it. Okay, so this guy was like, or this girl, I don't know. It was like 20 years after I called this black family syndrome. Let's imagine the hip hop culture as a big family and R. Kelly is the uncle that is adored by the whole family that got power, that everyone admires. But then suddenly if one of his, if one of the kids on the family goes to an adult and says that the admired uncle touched them inappropriately, they won't believe them and they will make him believe that it never happened. They might even get smart which is so true you can even get beaten up by your parents or aunties or uncles if you try to say that one of their friends touched you inappropriately they'll say you're lying and beat you on top anyways continue, let me continue reading it's 2019 black families let's do better stop creating this relationship that for your kids to respect you he has to be scared of you create a safe zone where they can feel comfortable to talk about it with you and most importantly tell them the truth Tell them that you love them, sorry. Sometimes we need to hear that to prevent us from looking for the validation in the streets. So this person just literally said, some of what I was thinking, I already said it is true, you know, um, just elder people, your, it could be your parents, aunties, uncle, they just make you believe that when someone is older than you, automatically that person knows the truth better than you or even if it's something that has to do with you. It is so true. And another thing the person pointed out is educating our kids about the kind of people we have out there. We have devil literally walking around on the streets, the devil himself, in the form of R. Kelly and a lot of other people walking around on the street. I pray to God to help me to like educate my kids, you know, to just know better, do better, treat women better, and just to know that there are people out there that are evil. There are just people out there that just are set to destroy lives. People like R. Kelly. I know a country like Nigeria, for example, I say a country like Nigeria because I live here and I know for sure that sex talk is not something most parents talk to their kids about. I can confidently say that growing up, not for one day did anybody, any of my elders, like my parents, uncles, aunties, whatever, sat me down and actually legitly talked to me about sex. Sex was always one of those topics that, you know, kids were not supposed to know about, you're not supposed to mention, if they're showing a sex scene, they're supposed to cover your eyes, things like that. So you, you find out that in countries like this or families like this in any country where kids are not properly educated when this kind of thing is happening to them they are not going to tell you it's just that simple because to them it's like a forbidden topic they already feel like you're going to like punish them for getting involved in something like that even though it wasn't even their own choosing which in most cases is actually true the kids are actually the ones that get you know punished in things like that let's say I come down and tell like my parents or whatever that oh this happened in school and this boy taught me inappropriately in a typical Nigerian household you're going to receive beating like what were you looking for passing the boys front in the first place that the boy touched you or what they're just going to find a reason to put the blame on you which is so wrong we need to talk to our kids more about sex about the consequences about what can possibly happen, about how people freaking take advantage of people, you know. It's just something we just need to do. Even our schools, in schools, there's nothing like sex ed in Nigerians, like um, secondary schools or anything. 
there is no topic like that the most you talk about sex is when you're learning parts of the body which in most cases they're even shy to include like breasts and other sensitive parts like that and i'm just like are you people freaking kidding so kids tend to learn all these things from external sources like the internet watching movies and just yeah they tend to learn things like that from sources like that and most of the time it just doesn't go well it's just time it's time guys let's hope that this documentary makes a difference because i just really stained myself here and let's see i hope i hope it doesn't end up looking very bad So moving on, by the way, if you are hearing any noise, the neighbor's generator is on, my windows are open, so that's the noise. Moving on, Sha, talking about something more interesting. You guys have been so obsessed with this Colourpop powder. It's so amazing. I love it so much. Sha, Kaito is turning one year. You guys, can you believe that it's been one year since I gave birth to Kaito? It's absolutely unbelievable. Like, I can't even believe it myself. I remember that pregnancy so well i remember the time i put out a vlog where i said i was pregnant i remember his breath so well how the whole process went you know i remember when i was so disappointed i was having a boy i was going to have a boy i remember the whole cs experience like obviously i remember all this is i'm just trying to say that it doesn't seem like it's been one year already you know i've contacted a bunch of people that We'll do most of the work i'm just trying to bargain price with them and then um the cooking i've contacted someone that will do some of it i'm doing some of it obviously if you follow me you know that i've been cooking your girl is low key a chef here <laughs> so i'm doing some but i can't take up the stress of the whole thing since i'm the one planning the party as well so i'm outsourcing some and then drinks, my husband will have to sort that one out. I'm going to try and film as much videos as I can this week and next because I doubt I will have the time to create new content very soon. So I have to have content ready to go out because this 2019 already started with a good note and I don't want to just like pause in between with no videos. I'm really enjoying putting out videos, interacting with people and just really know your comments and replying it just makes me sometimes i'm just on my phone like replying the comments and smiling and i'm also be like what what's making you smile so hard and literally it could be the weirdest thing or something that doesn't even make sense but just the fact that people are commenting and i get to interact is just something that i appreciate so much so thank you guys so much for your comments your likes your shares and just everything you do really thank you thank you thank you so guys this is the look i created and i'm so happy how this look came out i absolutely love everything about this look it's really really subtle but it's just a little bit of oh you know <laughs> um yeah what are you guys thoughts on this whole r kelly issue like what do you think about the whole thing have you seen the documentary and just tell me what your thoughts are let's chat in the comment section as always i quickly have to go and pick kobe then i have a whole bunch of errands to run so i'm going to pick him drop him at home and then continue my errands thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to subscribe like and comment and i'll see you guys for the next video